What's going on guys? Welcome back. It's been a while since I've done one of these commentary style videos, but I figured it was time for my return, since The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power Season 2 just wrapped up on Amazon Prime. Now, I would like to clarify that I have not yet watched the final episode of Season 2 all the way through. However, I know all the major events that happen in that episode, and I've read up on it, I've watched all the pivotal scenes from the finale, so I know all the context that I need to know, despite not having seen the episode, since my TV over in University Land doesn't want me to use Amazon Prime for whatever reason, so I won't be able to watch the finale until later this week, but I didn't want to put off this video any longer since I have midterms coming up and I'll have to do a lot of studying, so without further ado, let's get started talking about The Rings of Power. Now, before I start talking about Season 2, I want to give you guys a bit of a refresher of what my opinions were on Season 1 a few years back. I liked it at the time. I thought it was undeniably flawed, but overhated. As time has gone on, though, the show just kind of disappeared from my memory. It isn't a particularly memorable season of television outside of the musical score and visual imagery. I did a lot of coping back in 2022. As someone whose channel name is based on Tolkien's works, I didn't want to admit that I found something Middle Earth related to be mid, for lack of a better word. However, now that I'm almost finished season two, I can't deny this show isn't very good. Before getting hypercritical, I'll admit there are some things that I liked about this season. Of course, the visuals are gorgeous. I love seeing these locations from Middle-earth brought to life on the screen. Aragion, Lindon, Khazad-dûm, Numenor. There were times where I just wanted to enjoy the ambience of these locations. Halfway through episode 5, I said out loud, I wish we got to spend more time in Numenor, because it perfectly captured what I imagined that location looking like when I read about it in the Silmarillion and Tolkien's other works. Of course, Bear McCreary's score remains a highlight of this series. His score for season one was one of my favorites of 2022, and this is already in my top three of this year. The way he wove his themes from the prior season into this one, along with some new themes, the song Old Tom Bombadil, sung by Rufus Wayne, Wainwright, as well as the reprise by Daniel Wayman and Rory Kinnear, the actors who portray Gandalf and Tom Bombadil respectively, beautifully brings to life Tolkien's words from the page in The Fellowship of the Ring. I'm actually learning how to perform that song with my vocal music instructor at university, so that's pretty fun. There were also moments throughout this season where I felt invested in the story, moments that seemed thematically relevant and meaningful, Isildur expressing the guilt he feels over his mother's death, wishing that he could somehow earn the sacrifice that she made for him, and the way they were able to connect that to the character Theo, who also lost his mother, Durin struggling with his loyalties, the love that he feels for his father while facing the difficult truth that he'll have to rebel against him as he's continually being driven insane by the power of one of the seven dwarven rings. Celebrimbor finally snapping out of Sauron's illusion. That is when this show is at its best, when it's focused on personal conflicts. However, these are only moments that exist in isolation, because as a cohesive whole, this season doesn't work. One of, if not the biggest issue with this show, which has stuck with it from the very beginning, is that the script just sucks. 
they are counting on the impressive visuals and spectacle of what they are showing you to distract the audience from how blatantly stilted and expository every single dialogue scene is. The characters will just explain to you what's happening on screen. In the penultimate episode of the season, during the massive siege of Eregion, the orc army starts catapulting rocks at a mountain that collapse into the river. At which point I thought, oh, that's a smart strategy, they're damming the river so they can invade the city. Two seconds later, a character says out loud, They're damming the river! Wow, thanks, show. I wouldn't have been able to tell that based on what you're showing me. It's like they think the audience is completely retarded. On top of that, every character in this show is stupid to an absurd degree. One of my biggest problems with season one was how gullible Celebrimbor seemed to be, despite him having been built up as the greatest smith among the elves. A title that he must have been rather intelligent to have achieved. But nope, and in this season, he's even dumber. This entire season hinges on the idea that Sauron is subtly manipulating Celebrimbor into creating more and more of the rings of power, but the way he goes about doing it is so stupid. Anyone would be able to see through Sauron's lies, but Celebrimbor is the dumbest elf to have ever lived. Do you want to know what Sauron's great plan is this season? He goes to Mordor, gets himself captured and tortured by Adar for seemingly no reason, before heading to Eregion, still in the form of Halbrand, someone Celebrimbor has been directly told by Galadriel is untrustworthy. So he camps out there for a day, despite Celebrimbor telling him to leave, but once it starts raining, Celebrimbor feels bad for Halbrand, so he goes to check on him, and he immediately starts playing into Celebrimbor's insecurities about the loyalty he has from the rest of the elves, before asking if they're friends, and Celebrimbor says, yes, we're best buddies, so... He suddenly changes into the form of Anatar, who he claims is an angel essentially sent by the Valar to help him create the ultimate power in Middle-earth. Celebrimbor does not question this at all, and goes along with everything this guy says for the entire season until the end when it becomes obvious that he's doing a ton of evil, sketchy shit, even though he should have realized that a lot earlier when he was manipulating every person in the city to turn on Celebrimbor. But, like I said, everyone in this show is a freaking idiot. Look, I understand the subtext of Sauron stoking the fire of Celebrimbor's ambitions, of surpassing the legacy of his father and creating something that can truly change the world. That's very obviously how he was able to get to Celebrimbor, but it happens so easily. And the same goes for everyone in this show. All of the elves in Eregion instantly turn on Celebrimbor after Sauron tells them that he's taking over. They even refer to him as the new Lord of Eregion before Galadriel shows up and tells them, no, Celebrimbor is the real ruler of Eregion. Celebrimbor gives a pretty cheesy speech, and suddenly they're on his side again. For no reason. The same thing happens over in Numenor, where the corrupt King Farazhan exposes the queen for consulting a Palantir, which turns the entire kingdom against the queen and Elendil for no reason. It's like 
every civilization in this world has no agency outside of the characters who are directly involved in the plot. They clearly wanted to tell this grand story of how all of these incredible races of people are manipulated by a single person. Elves, dwarves, and men. They all fall victim to the temptation of Sauron. They repeatedly talk about how he gets into your head and appeals to your deepest desires. But the only way they were able to write that is by having everyone be incredibly stupid and flip their allegiances on a dime, which makes zero sense. Yet again, we hardly know anything about these characters. Good characters are the foundation of any story, and the character work in this show is paper thin. Even the handful of half-decent characters, like Durin, Disa, Elrond, and Isildur from time to time, aren't given the proper amount of time they need to become well-developed or interesting in any major capacity. Let's look at the character Arondir, the elf guy who we followed in Season 1 and for a decent chunk of Season 2. What can you tell me about him, aside from the fact that he's a badass who's good at fighting people? All he does is show up conveniently when he needs to save someone. You'll see five arrows come out of nowhere, kill a bunch of orcs, and you know it's him. What are his values, though? What does he believe in? He's just a good guy who believes in doing good. Like, it's the most boring shit ever. I don't know who any of these characters are. And that's the problem. When you don't have good characters, I don't care about anything that's happening. Most of this season is build-up to this epic battle in Aregion. But when it finally happened, I was just like, okay, I don't really care. Because none of the main characters can die. We know that. So they bring in these randos who exist purely for the sake of dying. They try to copy Boromir's sacrifice in the Fellowship of the Ring by having this random elf girl who we've never seen before take 50 arrows before doing something heroic and dying. Or Adar sending in a giant troll who doesn't really affect the battle at all. He just dies instantly. Remember in Fellowship of the Ring when the cave troll showed up and it took the combined efforts of the entire Fellowship to take it down? Well, in this show, we've got a troll twice the size of that one and it only takes three elves to kill it. Everything about this show is just a worse version of Peter Jackson's films. The Battle of Eregion is just the Battle of Helm's Deep, but bad. Even down to the at sunrise, look to the east moment, but it's inverted here with the cavalry not showing up when they need to to save the day. I see what you did there, show. It's just so boring when they have nothing original to offer and instead rely on nostalgic iconography to bait the audience into a false sense of investment. The writers for this show just clearly don't understand how to structure stories with this many different plot lines going on at the same time. Middle-earth doesn't feel like a vast world anymore. There's little regard for the passage of time or the distance between locations. The pacing is bizarre. For example, at the end of one episode, King Gilgalad sends a troop of elves led by Elrond and Galadriel to check on Celebrimbor in Eregion, because they haven't heard from him in a while. They imply that Eregion is pretty far away, though. We don't see them for an entire episode. However, in that time, the dwarves are able to travel from khazad to Eregion, back to khazad and then back to Eregion again. It's like Eregion's just 
down the street from Casa Doom. All you gotta do is walk out the door. But the next time we see Galadriel and her team, they haven't even left Lindon yet. What's going on right now? Where are people in relation to other things that are happening? Once again, a Rondir seemingly runs all the way from Mordor to Eregion in, like, a day? I don't know. Characters just show up where they need to be. Things happen with no cause and effect. The only reason the plot happens in this season is because characters have knowledge that they can't possibly have. I was incredibly confused when the first scene after the terrible prologue scene was Galadriel chasing Elrond, who's taking off with the three elven rings because he believes they're corrupted by Sauron. All we saw at the end of the previous season was him coming across the scroll that Galadriel looked at, from which she was able to glean the information that Halbrand was not descended from the kings of the Southlands or whatever. So Elrond knows that Galadriel lied and that Halbrand isn't who he said he was, but he has no reason to believe that Halbrand is in fact Sauron. The only person who knows that is Galadriel. So why does he think the rings are corrupted? Likewise, in the sixth episode of the season, Adar tells Galadriel that he knows the elven rings have restored their life force and prevented them from fading. How would he possibly know that? There's no way word of mouth spreads that quickly in Middle-earth. The only way that could possibly make sense is if he had a spy among the elves, which knowing his character isn't unrealistic, but they never specify that in the show. So it just makes no sense. He also says that he knows Halbrand is Sauron, but if so, why didn't you just kill him when you had him at your mercy at the beginning of this season? What is going on right now? This season also feels strangely rushed, like Amazon had zero faith in this show's success, so they had everything happen extremely fast. When I reflected on the first season, I realized that it was fairly uneventful. All that happened was Galadriel recruited Numenor, they fought the orcs, Mount Doom erupted, they forged the three elven rings, and she found out who Sauron was. But in this season, Sauron manipulates Celebrimbor. They forge all the rings. The war at Eregion happens. King Durin awakens the Balrog. Gandalf discovers who he is. Everything is happening right now. Which is bizarre, because this show is slated to have five or six seasons? If that's the case... Why did they feel a need to shove everything in here? Because, to be honest, it doesn't feel like there's much story left to tell. There were just strange narrative choices throughout this season, like them trying to humanize the orcs by showing that one of them has a wife and kid and doesn't want to go to war. They probably think they're so smart for challenging the idea that they're just destructive monsters, but they'll still show them doing horrifically violent things, like an orc slitting the throat of Elrond's horse for no reason. That's another thing. This show is over-the-top gory, seemingly just for the sake of being edgy. Don't get me wrong, Peter Jackson's films were violent to an extent, but the violence was always done tastefully. Here, it's just obnoxious. We'll have random scenes of orcs or people getting chopped up or Shelob exploding an orc's head, which doesn't even make sense. Even the moments or plot lines in this season that I enjoy in a vacuum are brought down by those aforementioned issues. And the strange thing is, 
that a lot of people like this season. I've seen countless reviewers saying that it's far superior to season one, when I think it's way worse than the previous season. The only reason I think they're saying that is because Amazon has made excellent use of the number one trick utilized by every massive franchise these days. Spectacle and iconography. As previously stated, the entire season is building up to a big battle, so there's lots of action for people who like stupid fight scenes. We've also got a ton of cameos. In every episode, we see some creature or character from Tolkien's Legendarium. We've got Baby Shelob, the Entwives, Old Tom Bombadil, the Barrow Whites. You guys get what I'm saying. All this season has to offer is spectacle and iconography, which I am so sick of. That is not a substitute for good storytelling. You may remember that earlier this year, one of the reasons I gave for loving The Bad Batch was the character work, which was far better than it had any right to be for a Star Wars cartoon about a group of mutant clone guys. Yet this billion dollar production couldn't even try to have well-developed characters or a logical story. I can't deny that as a massive fan of this world that Tolkien created, I enjoyed elements of this show on a superficial level. But it's just bad, and that hurts for me to say. Now, I don't think all hope is lost for Middle-earth. The War of the Rohirrim is coming out this December. Lord of the Rings anime is something totally unexpected, and it'll take some getting used to for me, but Peter Jackson is involved, and he's also going to be directing The Hunt for Gollum, which I can't wait to see, because I have complete confidence in whatever that man does with Middle-earth. He's proven that he cares about Tolkien's work and doing it justice in a respectful and meaningful way that isn't just corporatized to appeal to the most general audience possible. But you guys let me know. What are your thoughts on The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, Season 2? Do you agree with me that it's pretty bad and far inferior to the first season, or do you disagree with me and think that it was great and way better than Season 1? Just whatever your thoughts are. Please let me know them all in the comments below. And of course, as always, I hope you guys have a great day. Take care.